Ready? Take two. <laughs> Take two, baby. It's always better the second time around. Yeah, right. I, I don't like this Facebook yeah, event thing is just, yeah, it's not working quite the way it should be. No, not so, really, is it? So I see Ramon. Yeah. I see uh, Pete's, uh, Pete says, hey, all. Oh, oh that's you. <laughs> <laughs> you dummy. I'm just joking. All right, so. So, anyways, right. Pete's going to be stuttering just a little bit tonight, so just put up with Pete. Um, he is yes. he is um, exploring the wild uh, planet yes. of Delaware. <laughs> planet of Delaware. Is That's that like on, is that a planet it's or is that just a place on Caprica or, I well, you already destroyed Caprica, so it can't be there. So, it's, it's a new planet that Pete's checking out to see if it's got the... Right. Tiling them, then they can refuel the fleet. So we'll see from there. Yes, and, and it is a, a colonial bastion. Thank you very much. So we are on. Bastion. Yeah, Ramon, There's a word nobody on, uses much. Yeah, no kidding. So listen, <laughs> we're going to toast to everybody. Let's yes, so now, anyways, back remember, to where we were. We this had the a... guys from Beards. Yeah. I I like Hang on. This is This is, I like this side, though. This side's better. Side's better. We got to the other side. Let's go to where the oh, oh look at that! Bam! Cylon down. Cylon down. Mean. Cylon got kicked. Got kicked in the booty, man. Sorry, can't help you. And it's got the little thing yeah. in the back. It does. Yeah, it talks all about you know a little bit of you know uh, an astronomical ale for, for a space force admiral. Straddles multiverses, fruity but not sweet, happy but not bitter, with Hoppy, aromas not happy. fruit punch. Hey, come on. Made with Michigan copper hops from the local Milo. hops in Williamsburg. So, Michigan. Yeah, man. Yep. In the Orion arm of the Milky Way galaxy. That's Pairs right. well with freeze dried ice cream, tang, and Cylon kebabs. Cylon kebabs. Yeah, baby. Now, oh, to have a Cylon good. kebab, Cylons have yeah. to be non-electronic. Like they got to so be, they gotta be, the, they gotta be, they lizard. be the lizard ones. Sorry, ready? They, yes, ready? these are the originals. One, All right, let's do it. Two, two, three. Three. Oh, boy. Yeah. Woo! Let's see. And then uh, for anybody out there that has to go to the bathroom, uh, this will help you out. just started and that's what we're gonna do we're gonna chase everybody away i just spilled some of my pants almost said something worse <laughs> chris come on i haven't even started drinking yet and i'm spilling it already it's and it's all over the place well look let's let's quickly toast to the to the fans right oh, yes fans, to the fans fleet. thanks for joining us everybody and <laughs> thanks uh, for hanging out and... have some fun tonight <laughs> We got nine people who hung in there for us, so that's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Yeah, I can I can taste the pomegranate. Yeah. It's, oh, it's I like good. it. Yeah. I do like it. Mm -hmm. I'm not much of a fruity beer kind of guy, but this is good. No, no this is good. This is actually yeah, it's actually very good. Well, um, anybody else that they have or any of it? Pete, you're starting um, to cut good, out right, again. Chris? There you go. You're right. What'd you say now? It, it's a good one. Uh, let's see. And I should, should be any second. Yeah, I hear you. And I think I'm back. Yeah. Yes, I am. I'm good. So you were saying... Right, well, if, anybody gets, if, if anybody has any or drank any or tried it, just give us a heads up. Yeah, so what do um, you guys think? And <laughs> we, Cylon we pants rust. Just be <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's good. That's good. That's a good one. I like that one. <laughs> I'll let you um, know. Let's see. Inquiring minds want to know. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> um, well, well, I and... Stuff going on. 
on, right, Chris? What's that? We got a bunch of stuff going on. So yes. we have some updates and some stuff and and there's a lot Sorry. of a lot of cool a lot of coolness. A lot of coolness going on. Oh yeah. We had and... uh, we've uh, we've been everywhere. Uh so Pete's visiting the settlement on the new planet Delaware. Um and they have yes. uh, fantastic beaches, from what Pete tells me. Uh, not that Cylons like, well, you know, it reflects off the Cylons, so it's not a big deal. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. <laughs> so George Zuvalos says Shazbat, and of course Mediocre Modeler. Wow. Uh, I don't know, Chris. Did you see the the videos that uh, Mediocre Modeler? Yes, put up he went to. Uh, yeah, he went from his great stuff. You ever get a chance to go look at his stuff? His uh, he's got some. Yeah. Got some great videos from his uh, his thing, and I totally agree with him. Uh, he says something in one of his videos I totally agree with, which was, you know, you can go to these cons and and not experience the con because you're too busy videotaping it. So he stopped videotaping it and started experiencing the con and took photos and everything else and then did a total yep. review of everything afterwards, which was great. I loved it. Uh, which was, way to go. yeah. Yeah, way to go. That's a smart idea. Uh, we love it. That, that was cool. And he had that, some great models that they showed. So if you get a chance... Go over his page, check out the models, and see the the things that he did. They, they did there, and uh, you know it was. <laughs> I'm jealous. I I can't do anything. I'm just not talented enough for that. So, oh come on. Anyways, so, other, you have you have other cyclonic talents. <laughs> cyclonic. So he's a colonic. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have colonic uh, talents. I cyclonic maybe. <laughs> oh boy! Listen, Lola's with us. Uh, Charlene from Battlestar Saturn is representing. Hey. Charlene, welcome. And uh, I they, they Ramon, of course. They stopped long George enough to uh, watch. Eric Patton, thank you for joining, Eric. Thanks a lot. Eric, yeah, sci-fi. Sci and... is also uh, Thanks, guys, for uh, tuning in and putting up with uh, our. Uh, you know, I don't know. It's it's we're having some technical glitches here and there. Part of it was Facebook all... problems. Facebook was yes, some of those out problems. All problem. Facebook, yeah. The other but problem anyway, is look. Pete's 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 uh, the internet is just not. I told you, Pete. When I go somewhere, first thing I do, call up a hotel, say, "Hey, what's your upload and download speed?" Especially if I'm yeah. going to broadcast there. You didn't do that, did yeah, you? Otherwise, you know, no, I did not. Yeah. <laughs> Did not do that. I'm sure you really don't do that, but that's I do. That might be a I did <laughs> for the, for this last for the last visit when I had to go from uh, Georgia. I picked the hotel with the highest speed, yeah, yeah. so we could actually <laughs> broadcast. Priorities, best, man. man. Priorities. Yes, we definitely have to have priorities. <laughs> Absolutely. So hey, we have we have a tiny bean uh, waiting to yes a full report. So why don't we bring her on and. Um, and then we can talk about a little bit more about the beer and some of our acquisitions and comic books oh, yes. and authors. And but Tiny Bean's cool got some really cool stuff tonight. So I, I think. Uh, oh yeah. I, I, I Let's love hand these. Hand it over, man. I love these things here. So give me a second. I'm gonna turn her microphone on so she's good there, and we'll fade on over. Hello, can you hear me? Oh, cool. Hey guys. All right. Hey, it does yeah. work. Okay, we're good. Hey, it works. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> awesome. How are you guys doing tonight? Great. Great. <laughs> Good. Oh, yeah. Good. Well, oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I hope everybody is having a great week. I've got lots of fun stuff for us tonight from my little corner of the ISD world. I have a couple more summer preview recommendations. But first, I want to talk about some of the things that we hyped last time. I'd like to start with Sweet Tooth. Now, I hope you guys are watching this show. Just to recap, Sweet Tooth is a series on Netflix. It's based on the DC Vertigo comic series by Jeff Lemire that I was a big fan of when it first started. And this series is co-produced by Robert Downey Jr. And I can tell you, it is honestly one of the best small screen adaptations I have ever seen for a comic series. Now, let me clarify. This is not a word for word literal adaptation. It is somewhat forging its own path, but it completely nails like the tone, the, the look, the atmosphere. Now, the comic series was often referred to as Mad Max meets Bambi. And that's completely <laughs> accurate. Okay, I'll tell you right off. It's completely accurate. Um, in brief, 
recap, it's a world where 10 years earlier, there was this something that they refer to as the Great Crumble. A massive virus hits, kills most of the population. But suddenly, at the same time, all infants are born not completely human. They're born as human-animal hybrids. No one knows what came first, what one thing caused the other or what. But as you can imagine, the outcome is not pretty. Um, these hybrids are more often than not hunted down and killed. One of my best friends remarked at the show, it's, it's much less violent and brutal than the comics, which maybe it is somewhat true. But I see it as a remarkable feat in filmmaking that the violence and brutality is still there. It's just more often than not implied and pretty much takes place off camera. And I would argue that that makes it even more effective. Now, the overall reviews are pretty off the charts positive, so, so you don't have to just rely on me here. Christian Convo as Gus, AKA Sweet Tooth, is just precious. And Nunzo Anozi, I'm probably butchering your name, I'm so sorry. And you guys might recognize him from, yes, Game of Thrones. He plays big man in this, and these two have just incredible chemistry. And by the last episode, they will absolutely have you in tears. And yes, it's a cliffhanger ending with some massive reveals that I will not get into at all. Netflix has not yet announced the second season, but it is damn near inevitable with the reviews out there. Now, one of the other things I talked about last time was Infinite with Mark Wahlberg. Now, it's another comic adaptation based on the reincarnationist papers. And, well, this one is not quite as successful as I had hoped. The plot and the mythology that they set up is kind of convoluted. It's way too much to get into. But if you do watch it, you might want to pause every now and then, rewind a little, try to keep track of plot points that may or may not actually be important at the end of the day. However, it is worth seeing for the action sequences. Particularly, there are some great car chase scenes that give Chris Nolan a run for his money. And P.S. Mark Wahlberg is rumored to be the star of a possible reboot that IFB fans will surely want to check out when and if it happens, the $6 billion man. So count me in if that one happens. I got to check that out. Now, let's move on to uh, more up and coming stuff to watch for this summer. M. Night Shyamalan's Old hits theaters July 21st. And yes, this too is based on a comic. Are we seeing a trend here? This one is from 2010, and it was called Sandcastle. Now, much like most of M. Night's work, the details are shrouded in secrecy, but do yourself a favor and check out the trailer. It is pretty terrifying, so sign me up. Next up in theaters and HBO Max August 20 is a Hugh Jackman film called Reminiscent. Now, post-apocalyptic future, again, very on trend, scientists discover a technology where you can relive your past. Yes, that looks familiar. Yes, we've all seen something like this before, but I am choosing to have high hopes for this one, mostly because it is written and directed by Lisa Joy, who just happens to be Chris Nolan's sister-in-law. And she's helped on a lot of his stuff before, so this is her first time doing it on her own. Really excited, so let's add this one to our list to watch. Now, everyone is asking me, what is up with Stranger Things Season 4? Well, we still don't have a release date, but filming resumed since the COVID break in September, and the filming was wrapping up at the end of May, so they are still in post-production, but that means if, if all goes well, it, we could have a new season up by Halloween, and I'm hearing lots of new characters are going to appear, and there is a nice one-minute teaser trailer out there. I will link all these trailers for you guys to watch on my blog in the next couple of days, so check it out on the IFB page. Um, I'll have all that up there for you guys to watch and check out for yourself. Now, I'm sure you've all heard that the government is officially opening their UFO files on June 25th. This is a sci-fi fan's dream come true. I mean, after all, isn't part of the mission we all fell in love with to seek out new life and new civilizations? I mean, let's boldly go where no man has gone before, right? So that having been said, whatever the news drop is, it will surely cause ripples in the sci-fi fandom world. I'll be here to talk us through next time we meet and how this is going to possibly affect cinema and stories for the future. Who knows? In the meantime, I would love to hear from you guys what your favorite alien race or story or movie is. I mean, Cylons, of course, right? Heck but yeah. there's also, like, there's Vulcans, <laughs> yeah. there's Wookiees, there's Xenomorphs. I mean, the list is endless. 
So please tell me about your favorites. I want to know because, hey, like Fox Mulder, I want to believe. <laughs> That's all for Tiny Means Corner this time around. I'll see you guys in a few weeks. Back to you guys. Thanks, Tara. Uh, I, I've been. Oh, I, I finished Andy. off. Oh, I finished great. off the uh, Sweet Tooth. I did. Oh, what did you think? Oh, it started slow yeah. for me. It does start slow. Yes. Okay. Good, good point, uh, Chris. If you if you got past part two and then maybe into th number three, that's when yeah. things speed up, and it was much better after that. I was. Yeah. starting to doubt my sanity in the first one i was like really <laughs> yeah Man. yeah it was it was a little and obviously you know i'm coming from the place where i was a fan of this the, the comic series so I, I knew what was coming i knew what they were setting up but it was a little slow but they do set it up really nice and then you're absolutely right by the third episode it just takes off yeah um, it, it was good i've never yeah. watched i never did the comics so maybe that's because that's why it, it was slow for me because it was like uh, i don't know about uh, this thing it's yeah. kind of and Oof. and there's there's so many there's like 40 in the whole series i mean if they want really? to keep this going as a netflix series this could go on for a long time so we shall yeah, see pete and i were at a, a comic book store uh, we'll talk about it but i saw the the book <gasps> the book is like yeah it rivals yeah. pete's it rivals pete's history book <laughs> <laughs> not by much though <laughs> awesome <laughs> all right thank you so much and and we're looking right, forward guys. to uh, yeah everybody if you get a chance uh we'll definitely post tara's uh information uh, uh blog on there with all the links we would play you know, uh, you know we would love to play those trailers but believe it or not facebook will remove us <laughs> if we play right? trailers that are free i mean we're actually <laughs> advertising free free advertising for their movies but if you play yeah. that trailer or any trailers they shut your page down <laughs> they put you in facebook jail right. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. This is their trailer. And you would figure you'd be making, yeah, it doesn't work that well. But so, but we can do, <laughs> we'll definitely do links. links yeah, we'll definitely do yeah, links yeah, and you links. can see those. Links will yeah. be in the blog. Yep. We'll yeah, in. definitely. I'll have that to you guys within the next day or two when we can get that up and, and check out the, check out those trailers. Let me know what you think, everybody. Right. And then uh, you were just talking about Alien. Uh, you got an Alien yeah. book. Show us the book. <gasps> alien. Oh. oh. Nice. Illustrated story. This is, Ooh. it was the original comic from when we were kids, and we used to have the original, it was a big book, and I found that they re-released it under this title, Alien, the Illustrated Story, um, so I had to buy it, because Alien <laughs> is one of my favorites. Um, and yes, we were just talking earlier, too, that this is gonna, this is the 40th anniversary. Yeah. <gasps> 40th anniversary of Alien, come on, that was like yesterday. But, um, yeah, no kidding. I will definitely uh, be talking more about Alien in the coming months. There's there's a lot of material there to go through. It's Sigourney Weaver. Mm. Very. Good. <laughs> oh yeah. Tom oh Harris. boy, mm. here we go. <laughs> yeah, here we go. The, the, the baby xenomorph. Oh yeah, baby. <laughs> And I always swore that if I ever had an orange and white cat, his name would be Jones. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, nice. M Morris got kicked to the curb for Jones. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much. We look forward right, to, uh, to hearing from you. Too. Thank you so much. Yep. Yeah. Thank we'll you. talk to you soon, guys. I'll yep. be there. <laughs> Take care. Bye. You got it. Uh, and by the way, uh, mediocre model says hello, Tara. Uh, Chris, uh, Zubles, he made a comment while you were talking about bandwidth. He says first thing he checks out is uh, whether they have room, <laughs> room service. service. I saw that. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. I like that. Yeah, Nowadays, uh, I've been to multiple hotels here recently, and a lot of them do not have any food services of yet. No, they don't. No. I don't know. <sighs> the way, this old dollar man was in those at least a year ago. Yeah, if not longer. Uh, yeah. Karen... Karen Mercorella. Mercorella, thanks for joining us live. Hugh Jackman, yes. Stranger Things, another yes. Yeah, looking oh, forward yeah. to that. Hopefully they won't mess that up. So I thought Stranger Things well. was going to be not as good as it was, but you know, I'm the I'm the guy who's got stuck on it. So I was like, oh, this is great. This is great. And also my daughter talked me into watching Riverdale, so that kind of reminds me of Riverdale. So I don't know if it's the same. I don't think it's the same company, but they're same, but they've got the same feel. Yeah. But, 
Eric Padden, I have visions of government UFO report being released. Yeah. And it's just it's just the Galactica 1980 card on the front page and nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Good one. Good one. Good one. Excellent. So, um, Chris, look, bottom line is we we went we did a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, so we talked about the beer. The beer is a great, great beer. I like it a lot. Uh, we ordered that on our own. Right. We yep. have yes, that would be no. That. Yeah, that's that's not a paid advertisement. That is uh, that nope, is a Chris and Pete buy. <laughs> yes, and it's pretty damn good. Oh yeah. Oh, and by the way, speaking of beer, uh, we have to announce this. There's uh, the next challenge, right? So if everybody remembers, um, there's a beer challenge. I challenged. There's a beer challenge because I challenged you to eat forty year old gum. Oh yes, so yes, we have another beer challenge. You. <laughs> <laughs> yes, there is. You set up a beer challenge for me. So you found um, like eight year old beer yes. that is uh, Klingon ale, uh, never before opened. Uh, Warnog. Hopefully. Warnog. Klingon Warnog, Warnog yeah. is in the can, and, so, and the other one is yep. um, uh, Vulcan ale. Vulcan ale. So listen, this is what we're going to do. So both of those beers are six, seven years old. Yes. And they were never really meant to be, you know, imbibed. So, <laughs> but we have looked it up on the internet and it says beer does not go bad, but it does go, it, it taste bad. Yeah, I, I, I have my doubts, but okay. Same so, thing with gum, by I, the way. Yeah, same thing with gum. Well, the challenge is I get to drink one of those two beers. So, you guys, you guys get to choose. The choice is Vulcan Ale. Or the Klingon, what's what's it called, Chris? Warnog. One's Warnog. in a can. So if, Warnog's in a can, and, and the other one's in a bottle. I bet you the so bottle we'll tastes better than the can. <laughs> well, whichever one the fans want, right? Whoever you know, whoever wants, you guys send in what you want, and um, I'll throw the, I'll throw a thing up. Most tallies will actually. Yeah, we'll throw a thing up. Yeah, throw a thing up, and then I'll I'll on air. I'll do live. I'll drink whatever one everybody wants me to drink so one is the bottle one is the can <laughs> and um one's the vulcan one's the klingon Klingon. and you guys decide which one i get to drink since chris got to eat the gum i think that's it's right. only fair right yeah that's right yeah all right cool yeah so all right so look besides the challenge um uh, there's acquisitions yes we, we went really on a hunt we we went just oh, we listen to pete again book. I got a couple of books that I want to bring up. There's a couple of other shows. Chris, there's a ton of shows coming up. Yeah. Uh, mostly uh, August, September, October is loaded, man. There is a lot of shows going on in uh, um, October, November. And when you're saying shows, you're, you're talking not television shows. And comic book shows. Correct. Right. Yes, we're talking about conventions, going to various types of uh, conventions. Right, so whether they be comic book or sci-fi, and we're definitely going to Awesome Con. We posted that, yep. and right now we're locking down New York Comic Con as we speak. We're we're working on getting that locked down, but Awesome Con is, is a is a go. Yes, uh, and then there's a couple of uh, conventions, and um, we went. We also added in a mini comic book convention this yeah. past weekend that we attended. And we all visited, a, went to Third Eye, yep. right? Third Actually. Eye Comics. And it's it's phenomenal. The place is really, really cool. So we were able to, to pick up a whole bunch of stuff. So, um, and, then, and then not to mention, Chris, you also went to Mile High Comics in Denver, Colorado, which I visited like se almost seven years ago. Um, yeah, almost. Uh, you see, it's it's changed for the better. I mean, it got it, it, the building is is tremendous, but they're set up like they've added to what I got to see. You got to see this thing. It's like a, a mecca store. It's like the oh yeah, you know, the San Diego Comic Con of uh, comic book stores. You went to it yep. uh, at its well, their its, advertisement. You know, this this, this says it all right here. Right. Yeah. This says it all right here. Oh, it's awesome. Yeah, it is. It's incredible. It really is. Now, the truth be told is I'd ordered from them before. 
and they're really cool. If you ever go to their website, it's, you know, like they'll have like the covers and, the, you know, uh, the conditions. So if they have multiple versions of the same comic book, they'll they'll be able to, you know, they'll tell you what the price is. And uh, they usually have uh, pictures of the covers. So, you know, uh, competitive pricing. And um, it's a really cool place. So if you ever get a chance to go, you're going to geek out like uh, I did. But Chris, I think you got the better end of the deal because you got to see a, a better version of Mile High. So yeah. So I yeah. went to Mile High Maybe Comics in Denver. I didn't even. So I didn't even know the place existed. <laughs> yeah. So this well, was the weird piece. So I'm I'm like every day, every place I go. So um, I'm in Denver for business. Um, we're filming stuff out for the for what I do. And uh, every place I go, I always bring out. Google and comic book stores near me. And I've been to a multiple places in Chicago, a couple other places we've been to, and this was Denver. And I'm like, ah, so comic book stores near me. And I didn't know this place existed. Didn't know what it was. And <laughs> sure enough, um, I stumbled across the world's largest comic book store. And, uh, this gives you just a, this is like maybe a quarter. This is about a quarter of, that's incredible of what you're going to see. So yeah, this is crazy. mile high comic. This is off their Facebook page. And if you look over here, I that's a see life my mouse. size. Yeah. The that's life a life size. size uh, uh, yeah. Monsters. Sal. Inc. Creatures. Yep. Yeah. That's so that's the, Sully. Give you, a, you know, uh, Sully. Yeah. So that, that gives you, um, you know, a little bit of, of, uh, an idea yeah. in terms of scale. And if you look at these comic book racks, it's, you'll notice it's not like ABC. It's, a N and there's like one, two, three, four, five A N's. And then it goes across the other side and it comes back and it's CAs and the CAs are That's like, awesome. you got eight different CAs through here. It, it has everything. So this is, this is just the left-hand side. This is all the comics. There's unsorted comics over here behind Sully. And there's thousands of those. You could spend hours and go, go into the unsorted, but these are all the sorted ones over here. The stuff where you see where it Very says cool. on the back here, there is another set of like this stuff here, but they're in drawers. And these are all variants. All of the variants of your comics are in the back here. So, and, and gold key, uh, the gold, older gold key count comics are back there. They had my Adam, they had my Adam 12 I was looking for. Uh, oh, so yeah, did you, can you afford I, it though? Or I couldn't could you afford, afford it? it. They wanted $54 yeah. for the one I, I really needed. Oof. I was like, uh, oh, man. I did spend some money and I spent about four and a half hours here and still didn't get to go through oh, everything. <laughs> so, so that's well, the, that's the comic book area. And then this is the graphic novel area. These are all the graphic novels. And then behind the scenes off to the left over here. So this is the, this is another picture of the, the comics, but, uh, the graphic novel area, this, all this area back behind where you see uh, trade paperback a sign those are rows upon yeah. rows like a library of graphic novels that go all the way across the building <laughs> so insane. you don't you you don't you can't go back there you have to ask for whatever graphic novel you're looking for but those are all stacked back there it's That's really it's unbelievable crazy. then they had all of the different well, toys um from there oh, they have toys and everything else and uh that, that <laughs> it's just it's different cool um yeah, you know, just tons and tons. You can go on their website, check all their stuff out. But yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. <laughs> it was I didn't uh I was I was like a kid in a candy store at first. I, I screamed like a little girl and when I first walked in. I was like <laughs> I was like, Oh my I god. You like a little kid. Yeah. Gotta and then girl. I was probably running around like a kid like a two year old on freaking Red Bull. Um zipping around the place from one spot to another couldn't stay in well, let's go check this spot out of here I'll, I'll see if they have this comic and they're like oh let me go over here and look at this now and i right. it, i was stand going by. i was going crazy stand by now because you're like you're you're foaming a little bit at the mouth but <laughs> that's the beer that's the beer razor razor ramon wants to hear your rating so use your oh, this one ability and give it the rating oh this one has to be a oh, 10 boy, because yes. it had music they had uh a they 10. had music yeah. So your rating doesn't go higher than five. What did you get ten from? Well, that's oh a double. God. It's a double rating. <laughs> so a double rating system. Yeah, it's a double rating system on this one. Double rating. System. I had to use double on this one because oh, it was just so big. 
It the only thing you could say bad about this place was you yeah. didn't have enough time to go through it. <laughs> right. It's just too much oh yeah, stuff. you gotta go back. Yeah, you got to you got to so, go there a couple days in a row for sure. So you um, gave it a ten out of what? A ten, 10 out, out of, 10. of like a million or ten out of a ten. If what I was it? gonna give it ten out of ten, it had music. They had a cat, and the cat was very friendly. So oh, that's right. The cat didn't scratch eyes out. No, nope, cat was gave cool. It a ten out of ten. I don't know, yeah. man. That uh, had I'm, music. I'm just, okay. The only thing I would count down on it, if I was to count something, that, that would just say one bad thing about the whole thing, was um, it was uh, a heat wave in uh, Colorado, and the place was a little warm. I mean, they had they had uh, swamp coolers. I don't know if you know what those are, but uh, big old water cooler things blowing throughout the entire area. But it was a little warm in there. Not unbearable, but it was warm. Uh, but other than that, music, everything that you could possibly look for. The other problem is I just, if I counted it down on another thing was I didn't have enough money. <laughs> it's kind of my fault, you know, but let's put it this way. I spent, I spent over a hundred dollars, uh, under $200, but not by much. <laughs> oh boy. Mediocre modeler says if this was your local comic book shop, you would never go to any other comic oh, no. store ever. Oh ever. yeah. Correct. Correct. You would never have to know. No, no. absolutely not. Um, however, we so you bought a bunch of stuff. Yeah. So let's um let's backtrack. Let's backtrack to um third eye. Let's yep. go with, let's let's work our way from third eye to the mini convention and then end up with the um uh the mile high. Okay. So real quick, I got I got one of these as promised. So I gotta admit that although Chris is very Cyclonic, and we'll, we'll I'll, I'll tell you why I'm, I'm using that tonight. Um, I got one right, certificate of authenticity. You know, Chris said he was going to get me one, and it's all chromed and all that. So yes, he he gave it. He, you know, yep. he's a man of his word. Thank you, Chris. Um, and then I picked up uh, myself at the uh, Third Eye, which we went to in Annapolis, which was great. I got this man, Battlestar Folly of the Gods. Uh, it's a this good, is it's a good graphic incredible, novel. man. And it's it's the yeah, it's a graphic novel, trade paperback, and it's fantastic. So we'll we'll talk about this in the future. I thought that was one heck of a of a find. I happen to get Planet of the Apes Cataclysm, right? So I'm trying to catch up on all my uh, Planet of the Apes stuff, classic, of course. And then uh, Chris let me have this, which is Battlestar Galactica 1880 Steampunk. And we're going to talk about this a little bit uh, during the show. And it was written by Tony Lee, Eagle Award winning writer of Doctor Who. So this, the Cylons are called Cyclonics in, in this. And there's a lot to be said about it. So we're going to talk about it. It's a lot of fun before we get into the actual, um, right? So tonight, uh, we also have to mention that Cylon Death Machine, Battlestar Galactica, book number two, chapter yep. 11. And chapter 12, which, which, that's what we're going to end with. But, um, Chris, we also, real quick, we went to a small comic book um, uh, convention. Yep. It was it was small, right? It was at a hotel, but it was small. It's something that you usually might find at a VFW. And right. we picked up we picked up these. The Legend of... There you go, down a little bit. There you go. Oh, you got it? Okay, yep, there oh, you go. sorry. There you go. Okay, so... This is uh, original, right? And this is the Legends of the Crusaders. And it is uh, one of these uh, self-published and written uh, comic books. It's a series. We, they, um, we picked up issue one and two of five. They only, only one and two exist currently. And we met the creator, Michael Watts. And we're in negotiations to get him to come on to the show. And tell us how he got these made. Um, the story is his own, and he brought several artists together to get these done. And he's going to tell us all about how he wrote and how he put it together. So we're getting, we're trying to lock him down on a date. Um, and I also picked this up real quick. Only at Comic Con, Hollywood fans and the limits of exclusivity. I thought this was a uh, fantastic work by a professor UCLA in uh, media entertainment. So that's, I was like, man, I, I saw that and went gaga. But uh, Chris, I also found this, writing science fiction and fantasy television. 
I got that at a local uh, bookstore in uh, here in Rehoboth, um, uh, Delaware, and Military Science of Star Wars. We don't do a lot of Star Wars talk because everybody else covers it, but I thought this was really interesting uh, in terms of you know how they compare and contrast uh, military science, and uh, I believe he uses the U.S. Army, and it's uh, I'm gonna, I'll I'll let everybody know how that works out. So that were that was my end of the acquisitions. Chris has a bunch of stuff that he wants to bring up. So why don't you uh, why don't you let us know? Uh, show us what you got. Uh, I'm just gonna leave a couple. I mean, I I got a large pack here. Let me, uh, uh... Let's go do the overhead camera. Oh boy, he's he's going into the safe. Yeah, so I didn't get too much. Um, oh man, oh boy, there's some good stuff there. Focus, focus. Hey, focus. wait a minute, Chris. Is that all from? What is that from? Is that from Third is, Eye or is this that is just from, from uh, uh, Denver? Okay, Thir oh, Third Denver. Eye is filed. <laughs> <laughs> I filed it already. <laughs> Pick up a couple of pieces. Yeah. Um I think the you actually got a you got some really good stuff, man. Yeah. Um did you get go. the Firefly book? No, I already had that. That you had that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we looked at it. It was it was pretty cool. I so, got uh, some graphic yeah, novels in there. Is... Hang on. No, that's a nice one. That's a battle circle Galact the dynamite, I think. Yeah. Is that Death of Apollo? Death of Apollo. A, it's a memorial right? and it's got it's got multiple of the uh the original so we'll talk more about this in another episode, but the there was a Dynamite did new Galactica and they did old Galactica. Yeah. So this is this is kind of the uh the old Galactica. Uh one of the one of them. This is there's two of these, by the way, there's Memorial and there's another one. And then this is old Galactica from Dynamite also. Oh, yeah, yeah. So if you're not into New Galactica, there are old Galacticas out there. Uh, I get them both. They're all fun. Uh, they've got really good uh, pictures and everything into them. Of course, I got New Galactica, too, so this is more of the New Galactica stuff. This one's pretty Oh, yeah, it's cool. So this is Tales from the Fleet. It's got all the, all the ones in there. And then this is a, a newer version. This is a different variant. Uh, of the Battlestar Galactica. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. There's the whole reimagined stuff. That's yeah, cool. The reimagined cool. stuff. That's why I got a third eye. I spent some money there, and then at DC or at uh, Denver, I was able Denver. to almost finish out my V collection. So oh yeah, v. you've been working on that for a while. And yep, V is that's right. Cool. One of my favorites. Very cool. And this is the one I've been looking for the most, but finally, they finally had that oh, one. That's a good one. These are variants, so they're a little bit more expensive. And then, of course, I like uh, the, the old Galactica that I was talking about. They had some cool covers, or the, the, the um, so this is a different variant. So some of the old Galactica, the, this is the the Marvel Battlestar Galacticas. There's two variants. Oh, yeah. This is one variant, and then yep. another size uh, actually had a barcode. Yeah, and then so, there's another one, Chris. There's a there's a third that has no. No, Nothing on no, it. no barcode, no Spider Man, and it's blank. It's just white, yeah. a white box. So that's and then the they have uh, some of these. I don't know if you've seen the cartoon ones, but these are. Uh, yeah. All, oh, yeah. I got, all, I got most of these. I'm finally working on getting those down. And then. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of fun getting those guys. Those are just, those are kind of cool. The, uh, oh, yeah. And, you know, there's another. Oh, yeah. Very cool. Yeah, I remember yeah. when that stuff was. It's it's hard to get some of the cooler covers. I like this one's funny. It depends like, on this one's real funny. <laughs> oh, that's a good one too. Love it. Love yeah, the not toaster. your you know local <laughs> local comic book shop doesn't always get all the different covers. Right. So if you know if and when you can, if that's your thing, and obviously it's our thing, so we get the yes, covers. This variants. This is another variant. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I mask. never saw that masks. one before. That's cool. Oh yeah, so I got a bunch of. We could go through these all night. I know everybody's like going to go to bed sooner or later, but uh, of yeah. course, my favorite cover oh. is this one. Oh man, look at that! Is that's that's Lucifer, right? That's supposed that's to be Lucifer, spectrum. yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, Robert, uh, I won't Brown go through all of them, but uh, actually, we'll, we'll do a whole show on 
on comics probably another time. On the comic books, we'll talk about the actual. Yeah, we'll talk about the actual. You know, oh, uh, one of the ones you might want to look stuff. at. Um, another good series is Death of Apollo. Yeah, it is. It was. It was well done. It yeah. really was well done. Uh, Robert Bounds with us live. Thanks for joining us, Rob. Um, and he mentions the um, about an idea discussion of cinematic dystopias. His favorite was Brazil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did. We touched upon some of the newer stuff that's coming out. So maybe one of these days we can we'll do that. We'll talk a little bit about you know dystopian yeah. movies because I I actually happen to like them myself. So yeah. Well, speaking Anyways. of dystopia, I think it's like steampunk. Steampunk. Yes. This is uh. So you got the steampunk one. I went ahead and yes. got the uh. And if anybody does hasn't done it yet, I'm not big into digital comics, but I really did enjoy this because. This was kind of cool. Um, so you can buy it from Amazon for like eight bucks instead of it was 15 bucks if you want to get the hard copy, which I'll probably get a hard copy too. But um, but uh, Galactic 1980s, really interesting. I love the, uh, <laughs> the Cylons. 1880. 1880, 1880, buddy. Sorry. 1880. 1980 gets kind of stuck there, didn't it? No, you know, no, it's 1880. The, yeah, got the Cylons, at the, the Cyclon, yep. Cyclonics. And you yes, know, Baltar is really yeah. cool. It, it's a, it's a really good, and it's it's got some funny lines in it. Um, it kind of crosses the line with some, you know. So say we all is in there uh, in a spot, and it's a really unique twist on the on the story. I won't I won't kill it for you, but in case you want to get it, but it's a really unique twist on the story where Baltar is a more of a <laughs> evil scientist. Yeah. And um, you know the the ships are 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 more of a steampunk type thing, and yeah. then of course you got Starbuck, and uh, I'm not going to go through all of these. I don't want to cheat. It's you know. really cool though. It is. Yeah. It's, a, it's a nice mashup. It's a um, nice mashup. By the way, yeah, the, the yeah, one it, I think I loved the most is um, here's Muffet. Oh, Muffet becomes like Chewbacca. That's right. Muffet's a yeah. badass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey, listen, Chris, Eric Patton says, first two Max Press series in 1995 were my favorite Galactica comic series. And Razor Ramon says, the best is the 80s. You know, Razor Ramon, we, we got to <laughs> we gotta have a, a long talk with you, man. Can we do a ban on him? I don't know where you get that from. <laughs> Can we ban? Where's our ban hammer? No, there's no ban. There's no <laughs> ban. Anyway, so you know what? Chris, that brings us to that actually brings us right up to um the book and yes. and you know we are on chapter 11 so why don't you let that intro rip and let's just jump right into um uh, you know chapter 11 and 12. Book versus episode. <laughs> And Ray, Razor Ramon says, ha ha, too bad the stormtroopers didn't get any tactics from the book. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, bottom line is um, chapter 11 and the this part of the um, the actual book we see in it, it, it runs pretty quick in the episode. Uh, right. So we are one step beyond crash of the shuttle. So that's where we're at. And, you know, this is a, a really short chapter in terms of chapter 11. starts on page 96. And so the colonial ragtag fleet has been detected due to a flaw in the camel force field by a Cylon scout ship. And the imperious leader, this is great, Chris. The imperious yeah. leader ta- turns to his executive officer's surrounding his high pedestal is that crazy so this is in the book that so that's his executive officers are all around his pedestal and he orders a phalanx of the ghost ships he wants them to know they've been discovered so he's going to order an attack and it's going to be he's going to be using right. vulpa's ghost, ghost ships, ships the drones yep. yeah. yeah so back to and, our back to our our legendary ghost ships that vulpa invented that the, the peerish leader is really yeah. impressed with yeah. Which are just kamikaze so pilots. That, or they're actually just robots. So in this case. They're, yeah, they're, well, they're, they're all robots. But that's no, not the in the book. They're not robots. Well, 
the the, okay. the kamikaze ones, yes, are just they're they're controlled by the other people. They're controlled. Yes, yeah. they are. They're definitely controlled. And Volk was given credit for the creation of the drones. Yep. And if he becomes the Imperius leader, the third brain will vastly increase his abilities. Yes. So he's getting he's getting some kudos, man. The oh, Imperius yeah. leader is acknowledging him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so he brings back the uh, uh, he brings up the Starbuck thing again, and I love the you know first thing. Hi, chum. <laughs> Yes. You can just see Starbuck doing that too. Hi, Jim. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. So there's. It's interesting because um, he uh, Starbuck mentions uh, uh, the difference between spook versus scare. Yeah. And so that was a part of this, and by the end of the conversation, right, the Imperius leader determines that since the simulacrum seemed insane that the real Starbuck is probably <laughs> probably the same. insane too. Yeah, that he's mad. So uh yeah, isn't that that's kind of interesting. That was and it was so it's a quick it was a quick very uh, quick chapter. Yeah. Very quick. Um yeah. the real meat the, potatoes I love, you know this is kind of fun with the the back and forth between the fake you know the the simulated Starbuck and and the Yeah. And and yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> it's just they don't don't know what hey you know and, and he's you know, he's asking him, hey, uh, you know, you, you can't fool him with ma your magic tricks is what the, the, the thing is trying to tell him. It's just, you you know, that's right. you're spooked by your pilot. They may get spooked by your pilot's with aircraft, but you won't scare them. Um, so what's the, what's the difference in that terminology? Spooking requires a uh, mere feeling of a, uh, a mysterious scaring requires the object to come up and smack you in the face. <laughs> exactly. So that was, so, well, and the reason that he brings it up, Chris, is because uh, the Imperius leader is actually taking, he's having a little bit of fun. He's enjoying the idea that he's going to um, uh, take Adama out, right? So he's going to take out the, the last of the human race out, and he's, he's kind of like relishing it. And so he, you know, he doesn't understand the concept and the simulation of Starbucks explaining, you know, like scaring versus spooking and that's not what the Imperius leader wanted to hear. Like he was like, that's not, he just wants to get rid of them. And all of a sudden now he's telling them the difference. So that's not a good thing in terms of, you know, big picture and what he was actually looking to do. However, um, that ends, like we said, with the whole whether or not Starbuck is mad. Um, but the, the next chapter, chapter 12, which is, you know, starting page 99, we go back to Croft and yes. we're on the planet yeah. And that's, this is, there's a lot of stuff going on and it's similar, right? Obviously the last chapter that we just spoke about, obviously it doesn't, appear doesn't exist all, in the movie, right? That's not in, in the, the show, in, yeah. in the episode at all. Right. Yeah. So, um, that's different. So, uh, Eric says, um, the exchanges between Im Imperius leader and the Starbuck have a Smith robot vibe of a different kind. Oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah. Right. Yep. And uh, Rob says, Robert says, chapter 11 is seldom ever small potatoes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, right. it's, you get it's backgrounds on because... You get backgrounds on the Cylons again, which is Yeah, exactly. Awesome. <laughs> uh, Lola, when did he exist? So, well, when did he exist? You I mean, was in chapters of... One or two, yeah. I believe, of Yeah, the book. it was up front. Yeah, it, yeah, uh, yeah. They talk, he talked about how they created this... Uh, Call it a whole a silic, I can't say it. A simulacron. 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 Yeah. It's a hologram. Yeah. It's a smart it's a hologram. hologram. Yeah. Imagine it would have done that on the show. Oh yeah. Could have made something like that. That would have been really cool. Well, and um, that would have preceded TNG with their. Yeah. Their the, uh, the holodeck. Holodeck. Yeah. So here we are in terms of you know, um, the chapter, you know, chapter 12. And right. we're now in the shuttle and, you know, the imagery plays out the same as the, um, you know, the, the episode itself, right? So right. Cylon Fighter is on approach and this is all Croft, by the way, right? So this is, again, we go to Croft and Boomer orders everyone out of the shuttle because they've just crashed and Croft grabs climbing supplies 
um, you know, he's just grabbing whatever he thinks they might need to actually succeed on this, um, you know, the mission. And Croft and Lita have a dark moment between them. Starbuck has to leave the communicator behind as they evacuate. Vickers is moved by Boomer and Starbuck, right? Because, you know, Vickers got, got hurt. Right, right. And, um, yeah. So Croft exits the shuttle and mentions everyone um, is is wearing breathers, right? So I thought that was interesting how they kind of like, it, it's like he says like the wind or the cold is hitting his face and any any part of him that's exposed other than where the breather is on is uh, is really intense. And then there's a Cylon, Cylon fighter that, that's hurtling towards them. And the side note is, you know, like the description of the weather and the the fact that the breathers are very important, right? They, they even had one on uh, on Boxy, so that was that was you know uh, prominent in his mind at least. And um, Cylon is making a strafing run. The Cylon hits the forward section of the shuttle and it blows up. Yeah, it catches fire. Yeah. So, yeah, they're, they're having issues, right? And then. As the Cylon fighter maneuvers to make another attack uh, run on the snow ram, um, I mean, rather, it's it's making another run on the right. shuttle. On the, the shuttle. snow ram blasts through. It smashes its way through what's left of the shuttle. Which is and not, in the, is, not in the show. I mean, you always wonder, how did the snow ram get out of the shuttle? Or where was yeah. the snow ram in the shuttle? Uh, the book kind of fills it in saying it was in the shuttle. It just blasts itself through. Um, yeah. So they smash right through. They probably, you know, obviously couldn't get it out the normal way. However, they describe the snow ram, sleek black surface. Yeah. And Starbuck extends the long barrel of the snow ram gun. Doesn't say it's a double, yeah. double barreled. It's just right. So that's interesting. The one we know has two. There's there's two barrels. The two barrels, and it's gray, not black. Yeah. Um, Starbuck mans it and shoots down the Cylon plane at the precise <laughs> the moment. Got to love some of the like, words they use. I, yeah, they don't. They don't use. Um, they don't mention Raider at all. Nope. It's it's called a Cylon fighter or a Cylon plane, uh, which is which is really interesting. Um, and let's see. There's a couple of other things that come up. Right. Uh, real so in the quick. strafing room, I think one of the things we definitely want to mention is that. The the it, it the some of the shots hit the snow ram and yes blows off yes a cover which is like okay so yeah. what they you know they talk about it later on it's the battery cover it's the battery cover so this is where that you know we 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 move forward a little bit now and now there's you know where they have the problem but well the battery cover thing comes into play here in a little bit but. Yeah, so and, it does because it does get wrong. some damage and and it's damaged. Snow Ram is yes. not working correctly. Yes, and Croft mentions that. I thought that was interesting. It says it coughs and shakes, so there's yep. something definitely wrong with the Snow Ram. Um Boxy pops out and he you know he tells he congratulates Starbuck for <laughs> shooting. Good shooting. And which he does yep. in the show too. Uh, all ordered to the top. There's a blizzard raging, and um, Thane and Wolf have a talk with Croft. Yeah. And they want out and make a break for it. And they say this, which I thought, Chris, I, I'm sure you picked up on other things, but we can hunt, yep. build shelter. We've been in a lot worse. Worse. Right? And they talk about hijacking a Cylon transport and making a run for a sun system, which is interesting, right? So, yeah. So I, that, that, that's yeah. You know, what you, know, you never get any idea that there's anything on the ice ball to hunt. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know so, what the heck they're gonna hunt there. Right. I mean, they have no idea. And then, of course, they're and of course they're going at Croft now. They're like. You know, you're you're rolling over. You're being the you know. You just want your rank back. And yeah. Yeah. They're they're. Yes. Yeah. They're just they're just digging into him like you know, 
how dare you help these people out there? You know, they've done all these bad things to you. And yeah. And he's, so, so he, he actually questions himself and, and Croft is putting the fleet before his selfish desire. And he's like, we signed on for this mission and we're going to see it through. So I thought that was interesting. Um, so they, so moving forward you know as as the the story progresses in the uh the chapter the two injured men get loaded right um into the you know, the the snow ram apollo takes the controls and wolf and halls are up top yes they get underway and and very quickly on um there's a noise a scuffle and the snow ram skids to a stop right next thing you know right halls is lying uh in the snow Yep. It's like, what? So we got to see some of that in the episode. Right. Right? There's like a yeah. fight. I, I yeah. kind of was rewatching the episode today, but I don't remember. Maybe somebody will remember out in the audience. But the, at this point, the the snow ramp stops altogether. It's, it's no no repair. They they After they blow, they've messed up the battery. You know, they, they get into a fight up top and they pushes against the, he pushes them against the battery or something to that effect and it, it messes up the battery. This is, the snow ram at this point is non-functional in the show yeah, as well as in the book, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So, so this, uh, at this Rob, point, this is when everybody tries to shelter in the, Rob, the snow ram. Yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty much exactly what's going on. So um, Rob says, I'd have figured removal of a snow ram from the shuttle would be done as a land ram would be removed. Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. probably, I agree. That's probably what it, what it should have been, but I guess it, it was crash, all jammed so. up. Yeah, the crash. Um, Alls is in bad shape. Batteries are dead. They have to hide the snow ram, and they yes. make a snow so, wall. So they, they're hiding the snow ram by building a wall around the snow ram in snow. Yeah. Like, wow, that, that was not in the show. <laughs> No, not at all. No. They want to hide it from the Cylons. Yeah, because they figure Cylons will be coming. So, but then they're they're in the snow uh, ram. Like, okay, uh, what are we gonna do? Well, this, Foxy to the rescue, or no, I mean, Muffet to the rescue. Yes, yeah, right. Because they realize, well, Croft realizes that there's a diethene wave building yeah. in the storm, and he says it's that in the show. It's getting cold in the snow ram. Yeah, yeah. and Croft tells Starbuck. Actually, Starbuck comes up to him and asks him a question. So Croft makes it a point that twice Apollo asks him something, and he's like, "Oh, now, now they want to know my opinion and my yeah, expertise. yeah, yeah." And then, and then Starbuck says something to him and asks um, his advice on something you know, else. Yeah, yeah. And and then Starbuck like asks him what the odds are or something like that, and and Croft is like, he starts explaining that like, there's a death point, and. It's before the air goes liquid, and he explains it. Like right. they gave, you know, they give uh, Croft a chance to get technical, and he says, "Well, none of that." He goes, "I could never understand what they meant by the death point because before it goes liquid, you're dead anyway." So, yeah. bottom bottom line is they're doomed. Yep. Right here and now, they're doomed. There's no, there's no getting out of anything. This is the no um, hope section of ev like every show or every. Yeah. Thing yeah. that they there's always a no hope section. And then, of course, they fall. It goes down the other way. But this is that yes. no hope time uh, of the episode. Oh, hey, we've yeah. got no hope. There's no nothing we can do. And then, of course, there's the Muff Muffet to the rescue. Well, he takes off, like you said, right? Yep. He takes off, and no one can actually really move enough to stop him. Right. right. So, 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 yeah, he takes off. But uh, uh, Croft says, like, they're all... They're all succumbing to, you know, whatever the breathing or whatever hell, the lack of oxygen, and um, Croft feeling drowsy. Final, yes. yes, exactly. He talks about um, if if maybe it's better that the that the Daggett brings the Cylons because he'll get a a warm cell again. Yeah, it'll all come back before he dies. Before they kill him. Before he dies. Yeah, 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 yeah. and then. Last thing they do, Chris, is well, uh, Croft talks about can't fall asleep, Chris. No, you can't is, fall yep. asleep because if you do, right, sleep is death. So yep. they can't, they cannot fall asleep. So that's 
that's where the that's where we're at. That's what happens. And then we'll there's, stop there. There's issues. But so, you leave, leave you yeah. all on that edge. Are they going to make it? This is the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So um, let's see. There's um, Eric Patton says the Cylon fighter hitting the forward part explains why they couldn't get the communicator after the fighter is destroyed. Yeah, it was yeah. all probably all, you know, busted up and jammed up. Linda, yeah, well, they, he Russell, also says hey guys, they tried to go back for the communicator but couldn't. He tried to pull it out yeah. of the shuttle. Well, tried, yep. Yep. So, uh, Linda Russell, hey guys, uh, 2 10 a.m. here, can't sleep, so thought I'd tune in. Thanks for uh, <laughs> Woo, tuning 2, in. 2 10 a.m. All right, cool. That <laughs> yeah. must be like South Africa <laughs> yeah. time frame, isn't it? Uh, Two... Yeah, that's nuts. Where are you, Linda? Give us a heads yeah. up. Um, that's let's South see. Uh, the simulated Starbuck. Sussex, Robert maybe? Bell's, uh, catching or up. England, England or, England uh, or South Africa? Touch. Yep. So, um, yeah, yeah, man. There's a lot of stuff going on in in the story itself. We're at a pivotal point, like you said, and it's it's that that every everything looks bleak. Like everybody's basically yep. going to die. We'll it. see how you know how this stuff ends up. And this is when the commercial hits. Boom! <laughs> the commercial comes on. You're like, to be continued next week. Ah, oh, you're killing me. I got to know now. And then yeah. back then, it wasn't like, oh, we'll just go to the next episode on uh, on Netflix and click and see what happens. Um, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. you had no, to wait um, to the next week. And if you didn't make the time frame, they didn't show it again at the, you know, it wasn't like, oh, we're showing you. They, they only had a couple of time slots that they, sh they showed it again, like nine o'clock or late at night. Um, yes. afterwards, right. I mean, you missed the, missed the week before you, you, you had, you had to go find it and rent. If when, once it became out to blockbuster, now I'm dating myself. Um, you know, once it came out to the VHS tape, you could go get it on the VHS tape. But other than that, unless somebody hit the record button on your VHS player and recorded it back in the day, which is, you know, what we all pretty much a lot of us did back in the day. We had those VHS tape players that we said, hey, set it at this time or whatever else. And yep. That's right. Hopefully it worked. And if it didn't work, you were, I'd, I'd have to ask my friends and see if they did it. You know, because like, every so once in a while you got, you know, it, you didn't set it right or something didn't happen because <laughs> they were not great if you remember correctly, but so it's, what can we, you know, what, what can I do if I need to watch this and I can't make it that day? I've got a, a you know, something going on at school or something. I had, you know, you had to find somebody who recorded it and that was, <laughs> you know, oh, Hey, boy. you know, you those call up your days. friends. Hey, yeah. We actually used phones back in those days too. Like you called up your friends and say, Hey, right. yeah, I can, you know, did you record it? Yes. Yeah, like, I come over. Uh, you know, can we watch it together? You know, Eddie was my, my best, my, my, my backup. But <laughs> Ed, Eddie, Eddie, did you, did you record it? Did you, yeah. <laughs> did you record it? So I, I'll be up, man. I'll, I'll, and I'd walk up the 12 blocks to his house, uh, and watch the, watch yeah. it from there. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Um, as a matter of fact, so Lola says, yes, Linda's in England and huh? mediocre model says, wouldn't the snow ram have commas? Okay, I guess. I thought huh? at death point, Rob. Rob says, that. I thought at death point the air turns, turns to, liquid. to liquid. I recall the words verbatim. Yep. Yeah, yep. that's, that's right. what he says. That's what. That's what he says. And Boomer asks, "What's a death point?" And yeah. diethylene is... is the gas. Diethene. Diethene. Yes. Yep. Diethene. So. Yeah, yeah. So the book definitely has some differences. Thanks, Rob, for pointing that out. Yeah, here it is. Um, I found it. Um, you got uh, it. Di uh, it depends on how long it's term lasts. If the atmosphere under the influence of diethene descends to the critical point of gas composing it, of gases composing it, that's the point when, well, you start to really see much distinction in the, on the critical temperature between the gaseous and liquid phases. For our purposes, the air outside turns to liquid. Some call it death point. Though the names never made much sense to me, since normally you're pretty dead long before that point. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then, Isn't of course, crazy? he's answering. He's answering. Uh, Starbucks says, "Yes." Does that satisfy you? <laughs> Did that answer your question? Yeah. <laughs> he gets to show off a little bit. Yeah. You know, modeler says, uh, "Wouldn't the snow ram? Wouldn't the snow ram have communication?" Yeah, I guess it would. You would think so. Right? That only makes sense, right? Of course, it would have to have something. But maybe it was but short range. And, radio, yeah, maybe it was short yeah, range there, compared to the radio silence. Yeah. yeah. Well, Remember that's what the, yeah, the, that's what uh, Adama says in the last chapter 
Yeah. Right? Yeah. He said, yeah. Hey, you know, we could try to reach him. And they're like, no, no, no. We have to no, no. keep radio can't, silence. Can't reach him. But yeah. I would also think that maybe the snow ram doesn't have as much, in my opinion, it's not like I built one or no, been on one. Um, I would, it probably oh, doesn't have as good of communication device as the ship would. The ship would have a, probably a, a higher range or a longer range transmitter. So you didn't serve in one of those, uh, no, no, we blew a lot of them up. I mean, planets. you know, I, you know, I blew a lot of them up on the ice planet. You know, we, you know, I had a garrison there too. We had a good time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the yeah. beer was always cold. The there was world. never a problem with the beer being cold. It was, the beer was always cold. Uh, you just stuck it outside so, for a couple of seconds. Swamp world. <laughs> oh, the swamp world sucked. <laughs> yes, yeah, swamp world with a uh, was it like a castle? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yep. Well, Linda, Linda says can't stand up laying in bed. You, you're sideways. That's okay, Linda. I'm glad you could turn. <laughs> hang it on. on, turn us on and, and watch. So uh, hang on, yeah, we'll yeah, do this this way. Just, just turn, there you go. Yeah, we'll turn. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, um, that kind of kind of brings the the whole thing to um a break right a pause uh, do we have to and, let them back off you know, we picked them up on planet earth yeah, and now we gotta drop know, them back off again yeah we gotta drop them back off so stay tuned we're gonna have uh some guests coming up uh as a matter of fact i we have someone scheduled uh which is a, an editor uh author uh worked on um, many different um uh franchises and we're lucky enough that uh, right now all things being said is coming on and we will post the name once we get uh make sure that he is coming on uh but as as far as we know we do so we have an editor author writer uh who's heavily involved in all kinds of fiction nonfiction, writing of science fiction uh and and some of our favorite topics uh, battlestar galactica included and he's going to come on and, and, you know, we're going to pick his brain. And he's been doing this for decades. Uh, and he's worked with some of our other guests as well. So, like I said, as soon as we make sure, because he may or may not have a conflict, but as soon as we get, we know that he is for sure 100%. We'll publish, uh, put that out on our site. So stay tuned for it. And, you know, we will do, of course, we'll see if we can squeeze in uh, chapter, I guess, 13. No promises. Depends right. on how much time we have, but yeah, we're looking right. forward to the, the guest for next week and um, hoping to see all you guys yep. uh, here again. Just so, uh, um, wanted to reach out. Well, One last thing is um, just wanted to congratulate. So if we were also working on another interview with a uh, uh, person who runs fleet is family. Fleet is family is a, a nonprofit trying to raise money right now. They're trying to raise money for Paul, Hogan, Mike, Michael, Hogan, well, I say Mike Hogan, Paul Hogan, the Paul or Mike. The old, the new XO. The new XO. The, um, the new Colonel Ty. New Colonel Ty. Hogan. I can't remember if it's Paul or Mike. I can see. I don't know why it's Paul, Paul Hogan. Paul Hogan is D Crocodile Dundee. Mike Hogan. <laughs> yes, Yeah, exactly. that's it. So, that's it. So anyways, uh, congratulate yeah. them on their first. Uh, they, they're doing some uh, really cool eBay auctions uh, of specific right. things that were uh, donated to them. Uh, there in England, uh, and we're actually working to work with him to get uh, a talk with him, as well as a couple of uh, one of the artists that donated some uh, stuff to him that has uh, signed and everything else. So we're gonna actually. And, and the weird thing about all this is, uh, we are crossing continents. So we'll be talking to uh, the person who runs uh, the Fleetus family, whose his name's Patty, and he is out of uh, England. And the person who is donating the drawings, who's done drawings for multiple books, and it, he's done tons of stuff. Um, he's donated some do drawings for, for the next auction, and he's in South Africa. So <laughs> we're going to be doing uh, an England, South Africa, America broadcast. So all we're hitting three continents in one broadcast. Uh, but just so uh, you've seen, if you've seen it. Michael Hogan. Yeah, Michael Hogan. Paul Hogan is Crocodile Dundee. Um, that's why I keep saying Paul. So they, uh, just congratulations on that. They just, uh, he, uh, um, Bear McCrary donated all of these, uh, signed CDs 
for uh, yeah. yeah yeah so he he donated all those and they they did a really good they did really well in the auction uh 1020 is about $1400 US uh but these are all signed by uh Bear McCrary and other artists uh from there so he yes, that was it, one of their very it's first all going artists. to charity all going to the charity to help out to support yeah Michael yep. Hogan so yeah, not Paul so Hogan Michael that. Hogan <laughs> yes Michael that's right Michael Hogan so he's getting ready to do another couple more. He's got a lot of different of, of things he's going to be auctioning off uh, that were donated by some higher Hollywood type people. So we'll let you yes. know on that, but we're working on that too. So, you know, that's, uh, that's coming up shortly. So that's, and, uh, yeah, we want to make sure that, you know, we, since we got an opportunity to help out with uh, my, Mr. Michael Hogan and, you know, the new Colonel Ty, we yeah. are not, you know, we are inclusive. Yes. Our heart is always first and foremost with uh, Battlestar Galactica 1978, but obviously the reimagined is a part of the bigger it's, franchise. Yeah. As is 1980, right? I mean, you know, truth be told, Ramon, Ramon, yeah. will, Ramon will be happy with you when you hear that. So yeah, he'll be happy, and, and you didn't spit. <laughs> you usually spit when we do that. So, yeah, and you know, bottom line is the it was an unfortunate accident that happened to him, and uh, we're here to support as well. And with that said, um, I guess. We're looking forward to having everybody back uh, next yep. week. Same bad channel, same bad time. Less, and we'll less go bad over... problems. <laughs> yes, less bad problems all less around. Less bad problems. And we'll talk all the time. Yep, that's our goal every time. So we'll talk more about, obviously, the chapter. We'll have a, uh, our guest, and we're just going to keep keep rolling all that into one. So, so yep. thanks for joining tonight, guys. Uh, Keep a lookout for again. the uh, 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 can bottle. Uh, yes, right now pull. the record is uh, we got three votes uh, for the Vulcan Ale. They're so not, they're not official records yet. That's what's going on right now. Uh, that's it. I'm making drink no, the but can. We, there's three votes for <laughs> three votes for the Vulcan Ale. That's not a, those aren't official yet until we put the, the poll up. They may change their mind. Okay, so yes, you'll put the poll up, but yeah, guys, we you gotta you gotta revote because those they count. So come back and vote, and we will. I will dedicate the show to drinking um, whatever eight year old uh, beer. It was good so, beer at the that time. That's, that's definitely old. <laughs> oh boy! All right, guys. All right. Yep, he's dropping off again. All Just the in best time, safe, guys. It's yeah, it's that time, bro. Yep. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, here's to you guys. Uh, thanks for sticking in there uh, with us. I apologize for all of the fun uh, we've had tonight in regards to technical issues, but uh, here's to you. Uh, and uh, remember, you guys fuel the fleet. It is all you. So we will see you next week. Take care.